electrifying action. Nitrous oxide burning racing machines provide for unlimited horsepower drills. It's the All Stars, the national blood racing organization from Panama City, Florida. This is Truxton Tractor Power, featuring the All Stars of NMRO Mud Racing. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the National Network. Today we're just outside beautiful Panama City in northern Florida. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Lee alongside Rich Hooser. And Rich, this is certainly a contrast to the sand and surf that we think about when we talk about the panhandle of northern Florida. Right, Gary. The only sand we're going to see here is at the starting line and the finish line. And in between is a combination of sand and surf and a little bit of dirt. This is a very treacherous mud pit, but we're going to see some fast times today. We'll be joined momentarily by Army Armstrong when we come back to Panama City. Today's competition from Bayou George, Florida is the open class featuring the cut tires. These will have DOT approved off-road tires. We'll take a closer look here at a cut tire. And Rich, explain how these guys modify these stock tires. Well, what they do is what a lot of them use are groundhogs, which is an off-road tire that you use on your normal four-wheel drive back home. But what they do is they cut different configurations in these tires, whichever they think will get them better traction. 200 feet of mud, and there is one of our timing devices. And, of course, a goal for all these drivers would be to break three seconds through the mud. And our first competitor, by luck of the draw, will be Tony Giannis out of Tampa, Florida. This is a 1931 Chevy Coupe. He calls it the Dream Chaser. Once again, four-wheel drive, the cut tire class. A good start. He gets a little out of shape after the finish line, but it's a legal run. He's not out of bounds because once you get in that shutdown area, you got all the room you need to play with. As you can see he got a good start, kind of off to the side a little bit and try to get it back. As you can see right there, just skimming across the top of that mud, he had a pretty good run. And right there at the finish line, he knew he didn't have to worry about going out of bounds because he's in the shutdown area, so he keeps his foot in it. A good look there at the S10 Blazer of Garland Walls out of Port Orange, Florida. Gambler is the name of this vehicle with a 454 big block Chevrolet providing the horsepower. He's looking at a 3.188. Not quite fast enough at 3.457. He had a good run. Maybe he just lacked a little horsepower because it seemed to go straight down the track. We'll take a look here on the replay. As soon as he gets into that soupy mud, though, you start to slide and you start to lose some traction. Of course, the thicker that mud is, the more traction you're going to get. And when it's slimy like this, it's taking away seconds. And seconds are what you need to win this kind of sport. 200 feet of mud, 570 feet to shut him down. And there's a good look at the gambler coming right at you. Good crowd on hand here today. It's a hot, humid day here in northern Florida. And we have an excellent field for the All-Star Nationals. This is one of the more unique creations, the 1964 Corvette Funny Car. Mike Erdely out of Buchanan, Michigan. This is called the Mud Shark, featuring a 525 cubic inch Keith Black Hemi. And look at that run. It's a dandy. 2.939. There it is. A new track record. And not only that, Gary, that to get in that two-second club in this class is pretty difficult to do. So he's accomplished that. And he had a picture-perfect run. He almost just actually coasted across the finish line with that. If he would have stayed in the throttle maybe a little bit longer, he might have got an extra half a second out of it. But a good job, and it's enough to take the lead. And perhaps today, advantageous to go out early by the luck of the draw, he was third to run, Mike Erdely, at 2.939, the track record. And coming up next is Doug Dams in Destroyer 3. Now, he holds a national record for the paddle tire competition, but right now he is in the cut tire class out of Holland, Michigan, utilizing Chevrolet power. Let's see what he can do as he tries to gun down Mike Erdely. Adjust the visor, brings up the RPMs and nails the hammer. 
A good run, an excellent run. Look at that. He now has a national record in both cut tire and paddle tire, 2.813. An excellent run. He couldn't ask for it any better. Look at that vehicle just get up and fly. And he got that front end down just in time because when he crossed that line at the finish line, that's when he tripped the lights. If his front tires would have been up in the air a foot or so, he would have lost time because he would have tripped it with his rear tires. But he had it down. It was nice and straight, perfect. And here's Army. Okay, well, Doug, in the shutdown area, we just received word, a new national record. You're in the two-second club on top of this thing. It looks like a great day for you. Real good day. I'm glad we can make it down here and race in Florida, and I'm really thankful our wives let us come down here. Well, let's, let's talk about the run itself, because it's got everybody a buzz here. When it left the start line, it, looked, it was like winding up a rubber band. The harder you went, the further it seemed to go and pull and power up. It just kept pulling, it felt good. It was, front wheels came off the ground and it just kept pulling it felt fantastic it was going nice and straight and just felt good a textbook run for doug dams at 2.813 and that will bring up wayne shot this is the untouchable out of clovis california he has come a long way to compete here in northern florida with 600 cubic inches of Keith Black Chevrolet power. But he has a mountain to climb because he needs to best that new national record time of 2.813 just turned in by Doug Dams. A good straight run, but not quite fast enough. Rich 3.122. I think he just lacking some horsepower here because he started off real good. He's getting enough traction. His front end's on the ground, so the front end's pulling but just not quite good enough. As you can see it coming right at you here, you see all the mud splattering, you see his front end bouncing a little bit. He's hitting them ruts and that's causing him a little bit of time right there. Well, here is a guy that we have seen in victory lane many times. This is George Gregory, the new breed out of Tyler, Texas. He has that 496 cubic inch janky engine. The new breed in cut tire competition and once again, he is going after that national record of 2.813. Not quick enough. 3.058. Boy, and I would have thought George would have had a lot better run than that because the way this vehicle runs and the way it handles is unbelievable. He got a good launch, but I'm not sure because it looked like a pretty good run. And I know he's not under horsepower by no means with that janky engine, but just not quite fast enough. Well, the difference between 2.8 and 3.0 is just an eyelash. Yeah, and it had a lot to do with that starting line. It's starting to dry up a little bit and getting real sandy, and they're losing a little bit of traction there. So Doug Dams has set the standard here at Bayou George in northern Florida, and we are not the only ones here with television cameras. More to come. Stay with us. With Rich Hooser and Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee at the J.C. Community Park here in Bayou George, Florida. Doug Dams with that new national record leads the competition. Mike Erdely is second in the Mud Shark and George Gregory now third in the new breed. And here is the guy with the only small block in competition, Larry D'Antoni. He is from Gulfport, Mississippi, and he is driving addicted to mud. A 406 cubic inch blowing alcohol burning Chevy small block. And the time is 3.447. Rich, is this track slowing down? I don't know if it's a track yet or not. It's hard to tell. But one thing here, of course, he's got a disadvantage running that small block. But when you heard his engine, he's using all the horsepower that vehicle had. So he actually did a good job considering his motor size. But as far as the track is concerned, the only thing I can see right now is that starting line. As you can see, when he took off, he started to slide a little bit. They're not getting the traction they need, and it's, it seems to be just drying up a little bit at the beginning. And coming up next is David Falk out of Plant City, Florida, in the hard time Chevy-powered machine. There's nothing fancy about this. This is your basic mutter. No frills in this vehicle. And, of course, looks can be deceiving. You can't judge a book by its cover. You never know. A lot of these guys put more money into the engines than they do in the bodies, but the suspension and the horsepower is all that counts. And he almost goes out of bounds with his 3.560 run. And he's got a little water coming out of his radiator. As you can see, his electric fan on the front is not even turning. So he might have been overheating a little bit, but look how close he gets. 
He actually clips the poles at the out-of-bounds marker, but he was not called out-of-bounds. Was not disqualified. The run will stand as we look at a real pretty roadster 1927 model. This is Chad Miller in instant T. He has Rodeck power, 509 cubic inches out of Vandalia, Ohio. That is up near Dayton, up in the Midwest, and he is looking at a 2.8 run that he needs to go on top. Well, he gets a little hairy out there about halfway through the track. He started bouncing around, hitting them ruts, and I'm sure that concerned him just a little bit, but he stayed in it. He didn't let off of that gas pedal. As you can see right there, see how his left rear tire actually came off the ground, and when it came back into the mud, it cost him a little bit of time right there. Now, here's a good shot head on, as we'll be able to see maybe what happened. He got real close to that side, too, and one of them ruts just kind of threw him off balance a little bit and caused that, but it was a good run altogether. Well, Doug Dams continues to lead this mud parade, but coming up next is Al Stebbins in his 1982 Corvette, 540 cubic inches of Chevy power. This entry is from Enterprise, Florida. Al Stebbins in the bad influence. All right, look fast off the line, but not so. The time indicates a 3.357. It did look good. He got a little out of shape right at the finish line, as we'll see here on the replay. He got a pretty good start, but he is slipping and sliding. As soon as he hit that mud, there's where his problems began. He started getting a little sideways, and by the time he got there at the finish line is when he started getting crooked. And we'll see it right now head on. He's all over the track. As you can see, he's fighting that steering, and that's costing a lot of time. As you can see here at the finish line in the sand, he gets it under control. And next on the line is Myron Watson in a 1989 Toyota, but he uses Rodex Chevrolet power, 454 cubic inches. This is Nightmare. Myron Watson out of Jackson, Mississippi. And there is a good look at a good-looking, highly modified Toyota, but he is using that Chevrolet Rodex power. There's some final adjustments there in the cockpit. He'll grab the steering wheel and nail the hammer. can't be real happy with that run, Rich, at 3.4. No, it wasn't very good at all, and it all started at the starting line, just like these other guys have been doing. Look how you can almost actually count a second before he actually takes off when you see them tires starting to spin. And that's what's really hurting these guys. And if you can't get your momentum up, as soon as you hit that mud, it almost wants to slow you down. Well, here's a unique creation. Bartlesville, Oklahoma, the hometown of Keith Addison, driving high anxiety. It's a 90 Chevy pickup truck with a 439 cubic inch Chevrolet power plant. And once again, it was advantageous to get an early draw because the truck appears to be slowing down 3.299 for Keith Addison. Again, here at the beginning is where his problems begin. He starts to slide a little bit and he's losing his traction. And of course, you're losing traction, you're losing time. As the crowd looks on, we have a very unique entry being staged now. This is a Ford T-Bird 1957 vintage. A good look at Gary Osteen. And he is from Ormond Beach, Florida. This is the Dirty Bird. And he will need a national record run to win here today at Bayou George, Florida. down this course. And Gary took him quite a bit time to get there. 3.7. That's not a good time. He did have a pretty good run, but right at the beginning, just like everybody else, slipping and sliding. Seemed like he may have a little bit of hesitation in his engine, but it was a pretty good run. It was nice and straight, and he stayed on top of the mud. Let's go to Army. Now, this vehicle is a crowd favorite. It is, is it actually a Thunderbird or a replica? It's a 57 Thunderbird. It's um, all fiberglass body. I'd be a fool to take a real one, but this is the third one that I built. It's a little heavy. It weighs 3,000 pounds, and I'm outclassed as far as weight goes. And coming up is a Midwest driver from Fredericktown, Missouri, near St. Louis. Here's Ron Pence in Tater. This is the Chevy Love Truck, but not one you'd likely find in your Chevy showroom. The time to beat once again is 2.813. That is the new national record turned in earlier by Doug Dams. A quick ride. How quick is it? 3.081 for Tater and Ron Pence. And Gary, he lost some time at the starting line. I'll tell you why. When these guys take off, the clock doesn't start until their forward motion starts. 
and he actually rolled a little bit before he actually got on the throttle. You got to really snap out of that starting line right away. As you can see, it was a little hesitant. He didn't start spinning, but that cost him a little bit of time. He got real close to that right side, too. And that could have cost him the national record and a win here in Panama City, Florida. Steve DeLue coming up next out of Holland, Michigan in a 1923 altered 510 cubic inches powering bodacious. Once again, he checks off to the left of the starting line. Uh, motions perhaps to a crew member. Now flips the visor down. Quick run at 2.9 6-1, ever so close. But not quite good enough, but yeah, it was an excellent run. I don't think he could have done anything better than what he did. He got a good start, and you can see he hooked up right when he got to that watery part of the track, and then he just took off from there and just kept accelerating as he went down the track. As you can see there, as soon as you hit that mud, boy, that's when you got to look out because you start slipping and sliding, but he kept it going straight and turned out a good time. Yeah, that run was good for third in the standings as we take a look at the lady, Paula Harbuck, out of Oklahoma, driving flirting with disaster in 1989 S10 Chevrolet. Paula's a real good competitor here. All the guys kind of, when they see her running up there, they just like, oh, she can't beat us. We're not going to let her. But I tell you what, this girl has put a lot of guys down in the mud. Hey, I tell you what, she has won here in the past. She can do it again this afternoon. Flirting with disaster. It's a good one. It is a good one. Oh, not quite good enough. 2.987 for Paula. She did a great job. As you can see, she can handle that vehicle. There's no problem there. And she's got the guts to put that pedal all the way down, and she's not scared of it. And Army's standing by right now to talk with Paula. How do these guys treat you? You know, being a lady in, in what's known as a gentleman's sport, you know, do they cut you any slack or no, nah, they got to go just as hard as they do? I got to go just as hard as they do. They don't cut me any slack. In fact, I think they try harder. They hate being beat by a woman. We still have more competition to come. Can anybody knock off Doug Dams with his national record? We'll come back and find out from Northern Florida. Today, here was that national record run turned in by Destroyer 3, Doug Dams, at 2.813. As the track officials look on, Doug, with Destroyer 3, leads it with just a tenth of a second over Mike Erdely at the Mud Shark, and Steve DeLue is third in Bodacious. And here is John Clark in Killing Time, up from Fort Myers, Florida, driving a 1972 Land Cruiser. Powered by a Chevrolet. The father of two is a Mason subcontractor by profession, races as a hobby. He is uh, one of only two to go here this afternoon to see if anybody can topple Duck Down. Not nearly fast enough at 3.438. He did have a good run though, Gary. He seemed to start off pretty good at the starting line. He didn't seem to have the problem that a lot of guys did by sitting there spinning. He got in the ruts, and he got on top of the mud, but I think maybe the vehicle just weighs a little too much, so that takes away some of the horsepower. And here is our final competitor, Frank Harlow in The Intruder. This is a Jeep CJ. He owns a used car lot. I wonder if sometime we'll see this one on the lot. Well, once again, that time to beat turned in earlier at 2.813. Make some final adjustments, get comfortable in the cockpit, and he is ready for the final run of the afternoon. A little sideways as he crosses the finish line, trips the light at 3.428. Well, not good enough, as we're going to see here on the replay. It just wasn't meant for him to happen. He got a bounce off of the starting line on somebody else's ruts, and that causes back in to come up in here, and he lost precious time doing that. So Doug Dams takes the victory here in the cut tire class and destroy your three with that national record run. The Mud Shark is second and Bodacious rounds out the top three. Then it's Paula Harbuck in flirting with disaster. Chad Miller, the Insta T, and George Gregory, the new breed. And here's Army with the winner.
Well, when all the mud cleared in Florida, this is the guy that was holding the hot hand. Set a new world record, a new track record. You couldn't ask for anything for a better day. Nothing better than that. What, what did the run feel like to you? You were pumped when you came down to the end. You, were, you know, we could hardly get you to talk. You were so pumped up. Uh, it just set you back in the seat, and it it just hooked up and held real good. It just run real nice. And our congratulations to Doug Dams for the victory and the national record run. So that wraps it up from Northern Florida. For Rich Hooser and Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. So long from Bayou George. And here's news about an exciting new video release from Diamond P Sports.